it's just giving you the overview of the timeline and progress on these and the government priorities are that T levels will be one of the three main columns with A levels and apprenticeships at stage at level three which is A level equivalent stages so for our 16 to 18s they will fit in like A levels over two years and they will be delivered for selected colleges and providers from 2020. So at the moment our 16 to 18s come in and do two years and they do um, what's called a study program at level three. So from 2020 we'll have the digital T level and the childcare T level. Those are the first two that are being introduced and uh, as you can see that's where they'll fit in at level three. So, as I said, we have the current study programme as students do their main qualifications. So, at the moment, it might be games design. I mean, leading on to obviously what, what uh, Bournemouth may be offering. Games design or IT, media. So, those will be replaced by the digital T levels. So, that is going to be very new for us from next September. And we're only one of 52 colleges that will provide that across the country. So, government are taking this very seriously. Um, we, we have lots of Department for Education briefings that I go to as I'm leading on T-levels. And there are lots of projects, so with colleges that are not delivering are working with us to deliver induction to digital, for example, how we're going to prepare students when they come in next September and how to cope with this qualification. I would say it's a lot more complex as a com qualification. We haven't got the specifications yet. So it was announced in January, February that um, Pearson will be the awarding organisation. So they're working to timelines now. They have to be accountable to the institute Institute for Apprenticeships and Technical Skills, so they are meeting those milestones and we get informed of where they are on those milestones as we go forward. So we're hoping by January next year that we will have all the details so we can prepare our curriculum. But as a process, we are getting ready for T-levels. There are various government grants, so we have our staff going into companies for so many days, that's a project to become dual professionals. There's very much the stress on upskilling, becoming, getting those skills that uh, perhaps teachers who've been teaching for a long time haven't got anymore. So, so we're working with a lot of companies on that um, and working with other, other providers to get them ready who are going to come on board in 2021, 2022. So you can see there are only two T-levels coming on board um, at, at Farnborough, digital and childcare in September 2020. The other one nationally is, is construction. So those are the first three. And then there will be more coming on board. So the health and science will be coming on board in 2021. And they've just announced all the providers who will be delivering T levels in 2021 including that one so just the four for 2021 2022 there'll be more coming on board and so on so by 2023 everything all providers colleges even some of the schools are in uh, the T level pilot from next September um, will be coming on board over the next few years so they are more challenging um, I mean, I'm not a techie, as I said, but so say the digital T-level will look at cyber, networking, programming, and staff will have to deliver two programming um, languages, so like Java, so that, techno that level of technology is much higher, and what we have to deliver, and the calibre of students, and what we need to do to upskill is... is, is giving us a, well we've got a long lead into that we've obviously been taken on a journey really by government to take it very seriously to to make sure that we're ready so T levels are a much bigger qualification we have to deliver 
it over two years with 1,800 hours. So if you imagine our funding study program is 540 minimum, so we've got to up our game, that's, that's a lot more per year, 900 a year. So a big chunk of that is what's new is called the extended placement. So I started in Farmer in September and you know, you're leading on T levels and you've got to get 76 placements in industry with students going out for 45 days. So that's been my challenge this year. So we've hit our target and um, a lot of employers. So we've had a lot of industry committees. So for each subject area, I invited employers in introduce them to T levels, ask them if they could support extended placements. So government have given us project funding so that we get these extended placements in place. By the time we're in 2020, they're in place. So, so that's been really positive. Um, that is a challenge to get students out on 45 days, I must admit. But when we have the T level in place, we can plan that in over the two years. So uh, as part of the T-level, obviously the extended placement and we'll have obviously the, the um, course, digital, and they will still have the opportunity to do English and maths, but we feel for digital, as it's such a technical subject, we expect our students to have English and maths at GCSE and we, we are looking at five or six GCSEs with good grades, so it will then our concern is, will they take away our BTEC, our other vocational qualifications, if, if they introduce the T-level and where that gap will be filled? You know. So as T-levels are phased in, other qualifications will phase out. You're probably aware there was a Level 3 consultation which just closed recently looking at all qualifications because there are well over a thousand Level 3 qualifications that colleges other providers can use, so they want to streamline that. So I think that will be the future as we move into this. They will phase out the, t the, um, the other qualifications that are similar. So, um, so we've got digital business services coming on board, but no plans as yet, and that's not in the 2021 um, plans for those that are, are now named as the providers for that year. So still lots of changes, lots of um, consultations happening on and panels that meet. So the government organises panels that bring in employers to make sure it's employer-led to drive these T-levels forward. So those panels are happening all the time on uh, the different pathways. So these are the 15 pathways that the government has decided on um, and they're coming on board at different stages. So we've got agriculture, environment, animal care, business and administrative, catering and hospitality, child care and education which will run from 2020 and construction as well, creative and design, we don't know when that will happen yet, digital as, as we're here today. For 2020, engineering and manufacturing, hair and beauty, health and science, legal, finance and accounting, and then four to be delivered through apprenticeships, protective services, we call them public services at the moment, sales, marketing and procurement, social care, transport and logistics. So there are some anomalies. Where's sport? That's missing. So we don't have any news about a T-level for sport, so we presume that will still be an applied general qualification and we hope the BTEC Level 3 will still run for that. So, they're all allied to different jobs, obviously. Um, I mean, I think you've just spoken about all the different jobs that there are out there and um, obviously they're looking at filling those gaps at level four, level five, which is a national issue. I think I've mentioned all those facts. Um, I think um, just a few comments on the extended placement. Um, I think I have been really surprised at the willingness of employers to work with us on that. Um, I think the issues I've had are 
the expectations of employers and, and the expectations of the students and marrying those two. Those would be my issues. I think, okay, we've got placements. I think we've taken the line that we match the student with the organisation and we've had companies in, they interview the students and um, we, we get the best fit. We've gone for those students who are more able, so they've managed to do very well. Some of the graphic students, for example, have done some exemplary work and the employers are very happy. So I think that has worked very well. I've, I'm doing a project with three other colleges and they just give an app to students on their phones with all the company names and the students follow it through. So for me, that is not perhaps I think the way forward, I think the matching service is much better where we place them with their strengths and meet those expectations. So in terms of what we've got in, for information, what the T-level actually looks like in terms of content, I don't know, does anyone deliver qualifications here? Or, uh, schools, colleges or IAG people? No? I don't know what your backgrounds are, but... Um, the first year is a, called a core year, and they'll deliver the knowledge, skills, and understanding that goes with the digital pathway. So we don't have lots of information as yet, uh, and then that will be graded A to E, and the uh, the awarding organisation Pearson will set and mark the um, qualification. The the employer set tasks which uh, should be a case study, I would imagine, for the digital and uh, an exam as well. Um, and then year two is the actual pathway, so it will be the more technical development of knowledge so that they are able to move either into industry, into a higher level apprenticeship, or to university, but the number of UCAS points hasn't been determined yet for the T-level. So they'll get a nationally recognised qualification. Um, they won't be able to drop off at the end of the first year with any qualification, which, which we can do at the moment in college, but they will have to do the full two years, like the A-level and uh, it will be graded as a past merit distinction as an overall grade for that qualification. So I think I have covered everything. Um.